okay so let us start uh, this paper discussion uh, this is your aft paper 2 aft 08 okay which is basically your grand test so 21 to 24 any doubts 21 21 okay now you see it is asking which of the metal ions will be precipitated as hydroxides from the solution so you see if uh, your hydroxide is uh, amphoteric it will be soluble in nh so you won't get that hydroxide as precipitate so you require your uh, hydroxide to be non amphoteric so you see oxide uh, oxides and hydroxides of b2 plus al3 plus pb2 plus cr3 plus and zn2 plus these are amphoteric they will be water soluble they will be soluble in excess of nh so rest of them will be non amphoteric so they are answer are you getting a point so yes. why are amphoteric oxides soluble in nh yeah Why yeah. are amphoteric oxides soluble because in NaOH? They, they, because they will form soluble complexes. Okay, like you see, if you have uh, say AlOH whole thrice, in excess of OH minus, it will form AlOH whole four minus. Then OH whole twice, in excess of OH minus, it will form then OH whole four two minus. So if uh, they are forming complex, they will become soluble. It doesn't happen with acidic and basic oxides. See, there is no such thing. Uh, see, first of all, acidic oxides, uh, metallic oxides are generally basic. Okay, non-metallic oxides are acidic. But some of the metallic oxides are amphoteric also. All non-metallic oxides are. Surely acidic. Getting my point? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. So, in case you want to see me also, because you know, which I be, could see you people also like whole glass instead of one by one. Okay, so after this, after twenty-one, after twenty-two, yeah, please do not do annotations. See, this is this video I am going to upload. Uh, on uh, youtube as a part of you know paper discussion so it will be there so you people should ask as many questions as possible whatever is so in your 24. mind you can ask huh 24 24 see uh, we are talking on nucleophilic additions okay so you see if you are talking on nucleophilic addition it will depend on the positive charge on the carbonyl carbon because nucleophile will be attracted by this positive charge only so any factor which increases the positive charge on carbonyl carbon will actually increase the rate of nucleophilic addition so suppose you have a group here if it is electron withdrawing and delta plus will increase we have electron donating and delta plus will be increasing so electron withdrawing groups no2 cl no2 okay and cn so all these aromatic will go under this category now always remember that uh, we are comparing it with this compound chc 
on always remember that uh, aliphatic aldehydes are more reactive than aromatic aldehydes why because uh, in aromatic aldehydes this delta plus is you know like uh, decreased due to the you know pi electron donation from the benzene that is not a facility which is available in case of non uh, aliphatic aldehydes are you getting my point so this and this will also be the answer so answer is option is 6 are you getting my point so, so what about the sir, seven and second ha huh? yes what about the seventh seventh compound uh 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 Yeah, these are electron donating groups, no? See, more pi electron density is available for CH4. So, last second compound. This one. Yes, sir. Here, uh, you see, this is actually decreasing the. Here the what is it? Electron density here. Ketones have always no. Remember, ketones are always less reactive than aldehydes. Electronically, as due to ketones are less reactive than aldehydes because of electronic factors like uh, plus M effect. of csc group and uh, steric factor also presence of alkyl group will increase the steric crowding at uh, this carbon so attack will be a bit hindered are you getting my point yes sir sir yes the nucleophile can attack the benzene ring also no nucleophile can attack the benzene ring only when uh, it is strongly deactivated okay so but uh, you see attack of a nucleophile on benzene ring will cause loss of aromaticity so at so nucleophile will prefer to attack carbonyl group it is having higher polarity also and uh, attack here Won't uh, cause what you say as loss of aromaticity of the molecule. Your loss of aromaticity means loss of stability. Are you getting my point? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. So this recording is going online. So you know, like uh, uh, it will be available for you people also. I will put up the link on my you know Facebook or whatever it is. if you wish you can uh, go through it uh, you know i want uh, a good collection of online videos okay where we have discussed some good problems so that it might help you during the revision you know sometimes you are too lazy to take out the question papers you can just click on the videos and relive the whole thing are you getting a point right now i have that facility now So yes, the, sir. Yeah. So after this, tell me, of oh, 53 people, I am so happy. So a lot of people are there. That is so good. So next out, after 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Sir, twenty-three. Are we just supposed to remember that? Structure of thion tetrathionate ion. See, it is very simple. I have told you that uh, whenever you are having a thionous or thionic acid series, the ends will be either SO three H or SO two H.
So you see it is S4O6 means six oxygen. This means it will be this series. Are you getting my point? Yes, sir. That's it. Is it clear? 23rd? Yes, sir. Yeah. After this, next question. 25, 26, 27, 28. 28. 28. So what is 28? <coughs> In 28, you are having a reversible cyclic process which involves six steps. <coughs> okay. Steps 1 and 3 system absorbs 400 and 800 joules of energy from a heat reservoir at uh, So let us try this question So you see 6 steps means that is like 1 to 2 to 3 to four, to five, to six, to one. So it is saying that one, this is step one. This is, you know, heat addition. Means in uh, step one to two, you are adding Q1 to the system. Similarly, in the step three, one, two, three, you're adding heat Q2 to the system. Okay, at different temperatures. So you see Q1 you are adding at 250 Kelvin and Q2 you are adding at 200 Kelvin. Okay, and uh, Q1 and Q2 is given. Q1 is 400 joules and Q2 is 800 joules. Now, it is saying that 2, 4, and 6 are steps 2. Means this is Q is equal to 0. Then this step is Q is equal to 0. And this step is Q is equal to 0. Three steps are adiabatic. Okay. Now, it's saying that it each step temperature of one reservoir changes to another. Okay. So, what is the total work done in the system? What will be the temperature? Find the temperature during step five if uh, heat exchanges from reservoir temperature T5. What is the value of T5? So, you see, basically. The total work done uh, during the cycle is 700 joules and uh, if it exchanges heat from a reservoir at T5. Now you see, sum of heat will be equal to sum of what? So here there will be some Q3 also, which I don't know. But I know the sum of heat will be equal to sum of work done by the system. This W is work done by the system in a cyclic process. Are you getting my point? Yes or no? Yes, no, something. Yes, sir. Okay. 
so this is equal to 700 okay 700 joules now it is given that q1 plus q2 plus q3 is equal to 700 so what will be q3 q3 will be 700 minus q1 plus q2 400 plus 800 it is 700 minus 1200 it is minus 500 joules this means that uh, q3 is a lower temperature reservoir let us say that it is t5 okay so they're asking what would be the temperature during step five okay so you see if it is a cyclic reversible process then uh, entropy will be zero are you getting my point for cyclic yes. reversible process if, if it was irreversible process then so we cannot plot it on the TV, TV, uh, TS diagram okay but since it is a cyclic irreversible process uh, reversible process okay we can plot it on it as what you say as PV diagram and for a cyclic reversible process sum of entropy change will be equal to zero okay now you see if you are exchanging heat at constant temperature then delta s will be q by t are you getting my point yes sir if you are exchanging heat And the entropy change so you see if you are uh, giving heat to the system uh, the entropy will increase okay if you are taking heat away from the system entropy will decrease so you see for the for a cyclic process since entropy is a state function I can say sigma of delta S i will be equal to zero. Okay. I see I am having this process delta S. Okay. So I'm writing it like expanding it. Delta S one two plus delta S two three plus delta S three four plus delta S four five plus delta S 5 6 plus delta s 6 1 that is equal to 0 are you getting this yes no yes sir. okay now you see it is given that 2 to 3 is adiabatic okay so i am just writing adiabatic in color change so this is adiabatic this is adiabatic and this is adiabatic so if these are adiabatic then uh, reversible adiabatic then entropy change will be equal to zero so delta s 2 to 3 is zero delta s 4 to 5 is zero and delta s 6 to 1 is zero are you getting my point yes sir. so this is zero okay then delta s 2 to 3 is zero and delta s 4 to 5 is 0. Are you getting my point? Now, just what will be delta s 1 to 2? It will be q1 by t1. This is my t1. This is my t2. Okay. 
and delta s t two four is equal to q two by t two delta s five two six is equal to q three by t five with a negative q three by t five. Are you getting my point? Yes or no? Yes, sir. So I am just uh, using those things. So it will be Q1 by T1 plus Q2 by T2 plus Q3 by T5 is equal to zero. Okay. I could have selected better variables so that it would have been like Q5. Q5 by T5, but it won't make any difference. Okay, Q1 uh, is how much? Q1 is 400. A T1 is 250. So I can write 400 by 250 plus Q2 is how much? 800 by 200 plus Q. What is Q3? Q3 is Minus five hundred. Getting my point? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So minus five hundred by T five. That is equal to zero. So what can I do? I can write five hundred by T five is equal to some of these two. 400 by 250 plus 800 by 200. So this is like four. This is like 1.6. This is 5.6. So T5 equal to 500 by 5.6. Okay. Have I? Written some value wrong? No. Eight hundred, four hundred. Huh? Yes. The word is no. Seven hundred. The noise by the. Your uh, voice is cutting. If you could have spoken better. Yeah, can someone translate for her? Yes, no. Should use a better headphone. No one is saying anything. <laughs> What will happen to this country? T five by twenty will be five hundred by five point six into twenty. So by 500 by 112. So it will be close to how much? It will be close to 500 divided by 114. 4.46. So they have approximated it as five, okay, which is something which. Sir, how is it approximated to five? Sir, it should be four only, no? Yeah, let us see what they have done it here. Oh. Have they done anything? Five hundred plus eight hundred. Here they have used four hundred. Here they are giving five hundred. There is a discrepancy here. Are you getting our point? Mm. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. They have solved the question using five hundred, but they are giving only four hundred here. Delete. Again, delete is something which is okay, 
you do you think that i am uh, discussing this paper so that i can prove someone wrong or something like that i am discussing because even if uh, you know some things are wrong uh, you know at least it is a good question it will teach you something so let us just uh, make that necessary correction here okay it is 500 here so i'm just making all the values which will be corrected so it will be 600 here okay so if it is 600 here it will be 600 here also and if it is a 600 here but still it will, will it come to be an exact value if you are taking 500 will it give an exact value Six hundred by T five. Yes. Work done should be negative now because work is done by the system. See, I have already taken uh, the first law as per the you know work done by the system only. Are you getting me, Anushka? Yes or no? The moment you are writing, huh? Moment you are writing like this, no? You are taking work done by the system only. If it was chemistry form, it will be sigma Q I plus sigma W I equal to zero. In that that case, W would have been equal to the work done on the system. Are you getting a point? Yes, no. Yes, sir. Okay. So. Okay, let us check whether uh, we are getting the stuff here or not. So if I am talking to be 600 by TS, T5, here also it will be 600 by 5.6. And here also it will be 600 by 5.6. Is it a numerical or integer type? Yes, no, something. Is it numerical or integer? In this, uh, in this case, we are getting a 5.36. So that they have approximated to be 5. Are you getting a point? But the idea is that uh, idea is not uh, getting the answer correct. Okay, answer to anyone can get correct. But idea is to understand this thing. Are you getting my point, everyone? Yes, sir. Yeah. See, ten people have already down. Okay, so you know, I can understand. So after twenty-eight, are you people feeling hungry or something like that? It's twelve o'clock. Anyways, after 28, 26 is so easy, easy. Right? Twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight. No doubts. Yes, no. Something. Anyone, anything? Madhulika, any doubts? Yes, sir. Any doubts? Twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight. Twenty five is not a doubt to you people. Huh? 25 is not a doubt? No, sir. Okay. 26, 27, 28, not a doubt. 28 to no, your sir. Okay. You people are getting better in chemistry these days. So 29, 30. Sir, 29th, why is option 4 incorrect? 
because uh, you see mno4 minus is a good oxidizing agent clo4 minus is not that is not a oxidizing agent at all the reason but chlorine is in its highest oxidation state only no it see the definition is that if it is in its highest oxidation state it can behave only as a oxidizing agent it cannot behave like a reducing agent okay generally good oxidizing agents have what do you say as the corresponding element in the highest oxidizing agent uh, oxidation state but uh, you know it's not a norm you see if i'm talking about uh, O C L minus. Okay, then uh, okay. So I'm just drawing the structures also. So suppose you have O C L minus. You have C L O two minus. Okay, then you have C L O three minus. Okay, I have to draw the stuff also, and you have Cl of four minus. Okay, so as you are, uh, you know, number of oxygen atoms is increasing, the resonance stability will be increasing, and also the stability of oxy anion will also increase. If anion is more stable, it will not behave like a oxidizing agent. Are you getting my point? So this doesn't happen in other cases, like in other compounds in which the central atom is in its highest oxidation state. Uh, in case of chlorate, it is not found. Okay. In case of manganese, it is found. But then again, uh, manganese is a metal and chlorine is a non-metal. Okay. So manganese, see, uh, manganese uh, MnO4 minus will be behaving like uh, what you say, oxidizing oxidizing agent. Okay, so MnO4 minus will have a tendency to go to either MnO2 or Mn2 plus. Okay, why? Because you see, it is having vacant d orbital, which can uh, be like uh, partially filled like d3 in case of mn plus 4 and d5 in case of so these are more stable than mn plus 7 no such thing with chlorine actually are you getting my point mm, yes sir so d3 is basically half filled T2G. That's why it is stable. Are you getting my point, everyone? Yes, no. Yes. Okay. See, before this number decreases further. Okay. Let us finish. After thirty. Thirty thirty one. In 31, option D is incorrect. Density of alkali metals is less compared to alkaline earth metals and coinage metals. Are you getting my point? So here it will be A, B, and C only. D option is not correct. So, so we just is... remember that. Huh? We should just remember that. No, there is a logic also. See, as you go from left to right, no. Across a period, size decreases because that effect will increase. Are you getting my point? Mm, yes, sir. Okay. And atomic mass is always increasing as you are going from left to right. So mass is increasing, size is decreasing, so density will increase. Yes, sir. Okay. Plus, in case of uh, coinage metals, you have electrons in d orbitals which. Have poor shielding effect, so it increases that effective even more. So in case of transition metals, 
the densities will be more compared to alkali and alkaline earth metals are you getting my point yes or no yes sir okay after this so after 31 no doubts anyone feeling so 30 30 32 option c d yeah 32 option c d you see uh, there is like 1 uh, minute 4 seconds remaining if uh, the session you know gets out you have to join again okay so in th in 32 you see as temperature increases okay both rate of forward and rate constants of forward as well as backward reactions will increase rate constant always increases with temperature okay but equilibrium constant is actually a ratio of kf by kb okay so it might the ratio might increase rate ratio might decrease also it will depend on which one is increasing faster are you getting my point yes or no yes sir okay so you see kf and kb both will increase with temperature k equilibrium will increase with temperature if the in if forward direction is endothermic if endothermic if uh, forward direction is in the endothermic then as temperature okay so we are uh, discussing that uh, when you have an equilibrium then equilibrium constant is kf by kb okay so as temperature increases the equilibrium shifts in the direction of endothermic reaction means in the direction of endothermic reaction so if the endothermic reaction is in forward direction then the value of k will increase are you getting my point yes sir okay so you see in this case the endothermic reaction is in forward direction so the value of k is increasing as temperature is increasing because the yeah equilibrium will shift towards products k is basically product by reactants only the product is increasing and the reactant is decreasing k is increasing so a b and c are correct okay i hope you people are getting this okay after 32 i expect that you people should show more uh, you know like uh, uh, what is this attendance when it comes to advanced paper discussions see even if you have not given the paper no take at least go through the paper before the discussion then you will be able to even if you have not given the paper you will uh, be able to participate in the discussion it doesn't matter whether you have given the paper or not okay the idea is to go through the questions okay to you know put uh, some effort in uh, understanding and analyzing this questions it is the uh, your analytical power which will help you in the exam final je advanced exam are you getting my point so even if you have not given the paper no you should uh, attend the paper discussions is it clear yes or no yes sir okay after 33 33 is a doubt so hemiacetals will reduce the felling solution yeah you see what happens in case of hemiacetals the hemiacetal is something like this so if you are having an alkaline medium it will decompose in fact hemiacetals will decompose in alkaline as well as acidic medium in acidic medium everything will decompose whether it is acetal whether it is hemiacetal whether it is ether in uh, acidic medium ethers won't survive but uh, hemiacetals will not survive even in alkaline medium also so it will give rcoho plus r dash h are you getting my point yes sir now there are two things which are important for muta rotation also you need to have a you know 
you need to have an hemiacetal group the hemiacetal group will show mitral rotation it will also react with mild oxidizing agents like tolens and phenyls reagents are you getting my point yes or no yes sir in case of one this is a, a hemiacetal so it will show mutual rotation and it will react to tolens reagent also in second case you are having acetal so it will neither it won't react with tolens reagent and it won't show mutual rotation okay in third case this bond is not a hemiacetal because it is an acetal linkage but this carbon is having a hemiacetal group so in this case it will give free cho groups so which can undergo mutual rotation and it can also react with phenyl solution and tolens solution so the options if you are looking at one and three will reduce phenyl solution and it will uh, see reducing phenyl solution and tolens solution means it is having cho group and that is why it will form hemiacetal and that is why it will form mutual it will give mutual rotation also so if it is you know both are you know like uh, guided by the same uh, reason okay similarly compound 4 will reduce tolens reagent because it is having a hemiacetal group compound 2 will not will not be reducing but mutual rotating that is wrong okay for both you need a three cho group as a criteria okay are you getting my point and option yes sir products of acid catalyzed hydrolysis of 2 and 3 now see if you do acid catalyzed hydrolysis then uh, this will become hemiacetal carbon and this will also become hemiacetal carbon are you getting my point so both will show mutual rotation as well as they will react to tolens reagent are you getting my point same is the case here okay getting my point if you are yes, doing sir. here then this will become a hemiacetal carbon here it is already hemiacetal so its product will give tolens and phenyl ester are you getting my point everyone clear on this see if a question is comes from this concept you should not miss it even if the question looks scary it is actually an easy question okay see compound 4 will give tolens test because it is a alpha hydroxy ketone so alpha hydroxy ketones will give will uh, give uh, aldehyde through isomerization so it will give the tolens test are you getting my point so it will give phenyl test also no yeah it will give phenyl test also okay okay i think uh, if you remember that rearrangement is there no what is the name lobri lb lobri bruin uh, lobri de bruin van ekenstein rearrangement ld b z e rearrangement do you remember it it is there in your copy yes no forgotten see the rearrangement is basically telling you that uh, you have to see compounds glucose fructose and mannose all three are you know are in uh, what you say as equilibrium with each other in aqua solution 
Are you getting my point? Yes, yes sir. Because uh, they will be converting it. Okay, so it, actually it is something like this. Okay, let me just write it down. You, are, you see, if you are writing this CH2OH, OH, C double bond low, and something, 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 then it will uh, give an in diol intermediate. Okay, so if I am writing the enol form, it will be something like this C, OH, H, OH, H, and then there's this, this. Are you getting a point? So this is what you call as the in diol intermediate. So this in diol will give all the three. It will give glucose, it will give fructose, it will give mannose. Are you getting this thing? Yes, sir. So what is the other important thing about uh, these three compounds? Glucose, fructose, and mannose. They will give the same OSA zone also. Do you remember? Yes, sir. That is very good. So after this, Okay, Bhutti Vaishnavi is not there, or she is there? I'm there, sir. Oh, you are there. Sleeping? Not sleeping. Not sleeping. Okay, 34 CD. Yes. Anushka, you can just see also. There is a mic and an unmute button also. Normally, you will say so much, so many things in the class. No, you people are so silent. See, when uh, I wanted you people to be silent, you people were like, you know, always chattering in the class. And when I want you people to speak, you won't speak. Okay, I don't understand why. Yeah, C and D, 34. Okay, so for this I have actually, you know, I like and I love organic chemistry. So, you know, and I knew that this will be a doubt. So I just, I took the screen. Okay, so 34, I'll, I will discuss all the options. First option, uh, if you are taking red, uh, taking red hot uh, iron tube and uh, you are taking acetylene or any alkyne, okay, then you'll be getting, uh, what you say, cyclic polymerization. So you will get mesetylene in this case, which is an aromatic compound. In second case, if you are having an, you know, normal hexane, and you are do, using Al2O3 and Cr2O3. First, you will get cyclic uh, hydrocarbon, which is C6H12, and uh, you know H2 will go up. And then uh, it will undergo further loss of like CH2 and aromatization. Are you getting my point? After this, option C. Option C, I have discussed, it is similar to the rimer timan reaction, okay. But, but not exactly Riemer-Timmann reaction, but uh, you see the, if you are having tertiary butoxide ion, which is this bulky base, it will take this acidic hydrogen. Okay. It will take this acidic hydrogen. It will give CCL3 minus. Okay, and this CCL3 minus will give dichlorocarbon, CCL2, Two bars. Now, if you have a double bond and you have a carbene, then it will form a three membered ring, something like this epoxide type of ring or cyclopropane type of ring. And uh, then you have tertiary butoxide ion, it will take this hydrogen, H. This bond will come like this, this bond will come like this, and this CL will go out. So you'll get a uh, chloropyridine with chlorine at meta position. Are you getting my point? So that hydrogen is acidic in nature. Any hydrogen which is connected to oxygen, nitrogen, chlorine, okay. 
halogens other halogens sulfur it will be acidic in nature okay sir okay and option d you see you have ns2 group you have c double bond o so it will uh, lead to you know addition of ammonia across a carbonyl group so it will give c double bond o n on heating so you will be getting this type of compound it is aromatic getting my point anushka yes no yes sir yeah so after this tell me 35 is a doubt yes sir okay so in 35 basically if you are using hf it is a weak source of h plus so it will generate this carbo cation okay and you have a benzene ring so the attack will take place at para position will get this type of product now if you are using o2 this hydrogen is like you know it can be abstracted easily and you will get a radical here so o2 is itself behaves like a di radical okay o2 behaves like a di radical although it is o double bond o actually it behaves like as if it is having two unpaired electrons do you remember the molecular orbital configuration of o2 yes or no yes no yes it is sir. having it is having two electrons in pi star 2px and pi star 2py the last orbitals which we call as all homo all uh, what you say is highest occupied molecular orbital so this dot will combine with the radical which is formed here okay and uh, you will get uh, what you call as hydro peroxide derivative it is similar to the cumin hydro peroxide rearrangement this question which leads to formation of phenol so after this if you are using h plus it will become oh2 plus then uh, this if oh2 plus goes out then uh, this oxygen will become electron deficient so this whole group along with its bonding pair of electrons shift to this oxygen to get a positive charge here which is stabilized by you know like this back bonding as well as phenyl group h2 attacks here you get uh, oh this is the hemiacetal so h2 will uh, you know take this h and you'll get 5 co cs and 5 oh are you getting a point Yes, sir in that rearrangement step uh, why can't some other group migrate why can't some other group migrate see there are two options cs3 and 5 generally the migratory aptitude is more for aryl groups compared to alkyl groups getting my point okay sir So, 35 is done. After this, 36 is it out? 36 type of question I have discussed in the class. Yes, no. Thirty-six. Is it a doubt? If there is not a doubt, you can say no. And I will. The thirty-six say. option C. Alpha particles have show more ionization power than beta particles. And this is something which uh, we have discussed in the properties of alpha, beta, and gamma radiations. You see, alpha particles have more mass. 
So it has more kinetic energy. It is the kinetic energy which will knock an electron out of the atom. So it will have higher ionization power. Are you getting my point? Yes, sir. After this, 36 is done. Yes, no. Shania? Yes, sir. Oh, you are alive. That's good. 37, 38 is a doubt. Anyone who did 37, 38? Paragraph 1. Yes or no? Is it a doubt or it is not a doubt? Yes, no, something. Sir, explain. Okay, explaining this. C16 has 16. Okay, whenever nothing is given in a question, okay, then first step is calculate the degree of unsaturation. So degree of unsaturation here will be 9. Now we know that in benzene, degree of unsaturation is 4. So it gives us a hint that it might contain two benzene rings. So two benzene rings will account for 12 atoms. Plus uh, it might be having one extra degree of unsaturation in form of a C double bond C. So, two, so 12 plus 2, 14. This means uh, it might have two CS3 groups also. Once this is just a starting probability. This will account for 16 carbon atoms. It is saying that uh, this on, it is having two stereo isomers. So I can write it like P and Q. Okay, one is cis, another is trans. A cis on treatment with Br2 and CCl4 will give meso. And Q on treatment with Br2, CCl4 gives this D plus L mixture. Now we know the cis plus anti will give meso, sorry, cis plus anti will give DL. Okay, uh, cis plus, uh, P is giving what? Uh, P is giving meso. This means P is trans. Are you getting a point? I have discussed this with you before. Yes, sir. P is trans and Q is cis. So cis plus anti will give DL, trans plus anti will give BZO. Okay. Now P and Q, both if you are treating it with O3 ZN, you'll get 5 COCS3. You see, if you do something like this, you'll be getting this. Same with the case with this. Then if you're treating it with NH2OH, you will get an oxime. Okay. Now this oxime on treatment with concentrated H2SO4 will give you a Beckman C arrangement. Okay. So you will get either this type of oxime where OH is in the side of 5 or you will get this type of oxime where OH is anti to 5. So it is like OH is thin to 5 and OH is and T to 5. Are you getting my point? If OH is thin to 5, then a Beckman C element will be going like this and you'll be getting, you know, CH3 will be migrating because CH3 is anti to the leaving group. Okay, Beckman C arrangement always that alkyl group, that group will migrate, which is anti to the migrating H2. So if this migrates, you will be getting uh, you know, 5C double bond and CH3, CH3 is migrating here. H2 attacks, you'll get 5COH double bond and CH3. Tautomerization will give you this. 
and on hydrolysis you get benzoic acid and CH3 and H2. Are you getting my point? Similarly, if you are doing a breakfast arrangement of this, okay, you will get five. Five will be migrating here. Okay, so you will be getting this as a product, and this on hydrolysis gives CH3, COH, and five and H2. Yeah. Now you see, I have written the things here. You see, uh, if you are starting with this, then only you will get uh, U as this and X. And W as this. Now you see, aromatic amines will be insoluble in water. Okay, they will be like insoluble liquid, and it will also be giving soluble acetate ion, which is X. Okay, if uh, this is T, then it will be giving uh, benzoic acid, which is again insoluble in water, and uh, CH three NH two, which is highly basic. So it will react with HCl and give this soluble compound. Are you getting my point? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. So after this, both 37 and 38, you are able to get. See in D, correct incorrect statement regarding why. Why is benzoic acid? Acids will not get uh, reduced by NaBH4. NaBH4 will be only reduce carbonyl compounds. It's aldehydes and ketones. It will not react with. Carboxylic acid derivatives. Okay. After this, thirty-nine okay, is forty. Thirty-nine and forty. Yes. Explain, sir. Anyone who did this question? Yes. No. No. Okay, you see, you have two containers A and B. A is one liter, B is two liters, and there is a valve. Okay. Now initially, only uh, there is a little amount of water in A due to which there will be some vapor pressure generated in A, and in B you have some SO two Cl two, which uh, dissociates like this. Now you see when you are opening the valve. Okay, you can assume that initial, you know, you can assume that uh, SO2 Cl2 is start decomposing after the valve was opened. It is just an analysis. So we can say that uh, when the valve was opened, the total volume will become three liters. And suppose that initially we are assuming that there is no decomposition, then uh, pressure of SO2 Cl2 Which is which is undissociated will be 100 into 2 by 3. Initially it is 100, so 100 into 2 is P final into 3. So pressure of SO2 Cl2, can, assuming that both systems are connected, will be this. Are you getting up to this point? Yes or no? Sir, explain one more time. See, it is saying that SO2 Cl2 decomposes like this. Okay. Now, obviously, if you are increasing the volume, the pattern of decomposition will change. Getting my point? Yes, sir. Because um, volume is changing. So, what I am saying is that it is given that initially SO2 Cl2 was 100 ton, and it has deco, and after that this under undergoes dissociation. So I know the initial condition. I don't know the equilibrium condition, but then that equilibrium is again disturbed when I am opening the valve. Are you getting my point? 
Yes, sir. Now, so you see, if uh, I'm opening the world when the equilibrium is again disturbed, a new final equilibrium will be established. Okay. So I can assume that uh, I can bypass the middle equilibrium and in it say that, you know, initially I was having SO2Cl2 at some pressure which decomposed to give SO2 and Cl2. Well, and system was whole three liters. Can I say that? Yes, yes or no? Yes, sir. Now, you see, if the volume was three liters, what would have been the pressure of SO2Cl2 undissociated? So you see, if the volume is two liters, then it is 100. If the volume is 3 liter, it will be 3 into P. So what is PF? Not PF, uh, let us say, you know, like something. P dash, not P dash. Uh, Just use PSO2 Cl2, that will be easier. So PSO2 Cl2 will be how much? PSO2 Cl2 will be 200 by 3. Getting my point? Yes, sir. So you see, I can assume that uh, first uh, this PSO2 Cl2 occupied both of the volumes and then the dissociation started. So you see, initially, we can say that after volume of the, the pressure of SO2 Cl2 was 200 by 3, and uh, SO2 and Cl2 was 0. Getting my point? But it wasn't pure SO2 Cl2, no? after we removed the valve. Why? It will have a mixture, mixture of SO2. Yeah, so you see, yes. the thing was that first SO2 Cl2 was de has decomposed to give SO2 and Cl2, and again I changed the volume. So the equilibrium got disturbed. Okay, so again you are getting new values of SO2 and Cl2. Getting my point? So I can see that uh, I started initially with this much at the new volume. And it directly gave me this equilibrium. Okay, sir. Okay. So, I am using 200 by 3. It will be given 203 minus P, P and P. And you see, vapor pressure of water is always there. It does not depend on volume. It only depends on temperature, which is constant throughout the experiment. So you can, I can write that the final pressure after at the final equilibrium. Okay. It will be how much? 200 by 3 minus P. Okay. This whole thing will be 200 C minus uh, plus P. And plus the vapor pressure of water is always there as 20. This pull is equal to 100 torr. Are you getting my point? Yes, sir. Uh, if it is uh, like this, then uh, the value of P will come out to be 40 by 3. So the final pressure of uh, SO2 Cl2 at equilibrium will be 160 by 3. And the final pressure of SO2 will be 40 by 3. So the ratio will be 4 is to 1. Okay, so they are asking basically P of SO2 by P of SO2 Cl2, that will be 1 by 4. Are you getting my point? Yes, sir. Okay, so 
I believe uh, with this, uh, you people are mostly clear on all the issues of this paper. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Sir, work done, more should be negative. Anushka, is it, are you clear with this point? Work done, wala point. Back, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, three backs one. Okay. You remember Baba Black Ship story? No. Many people don't remember anything. Okay, so with this, uh, I believe that uh, I have finished the paper discussion. Okay. So. Anything else which you want to say or ask? Madhulika, you had any doubt which you gave on the stuff? Stuffy stuff. Yes, no. Where is Madhulika? Is she there? No, she has gone for. So then uh, I think she was having some doubt but she's not here okay so see what she was asking i will discuss it so you please tell it to her okay she was asking that uh, what is the relationship between cpm and c for water okay a c represents a specific heat are you getting my point C represents specific heat. Which is defined for one gram of water. Okay, it is the heat which will uh, increase the temperature of one gram of water by one degree centigrade. So this value is like 4.2 grams, 4.2 uh, joule per gram per degree centigrade. Now molar specific heat capacity. Okay. So CPM or CVM for water CP and CV are same as C. This is basically molar specific heat capacity. So it is defined for one mole of water which is 18 grams of water. Are you getting my point? So this into 18 will give me 18. So this into 18 will give me CPM. Okay, so if you do the stuff it will like 75.6 Joule per mole Kelvin. Are you getting my point? Yes or no? Srinya, are you there? Yes, sir. Okay, so tell it to Madhulika that you know. She didn't stay that long. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. So with this, and this is going on record on YouTube. So she will know it forever. Okay. So thank you people for attending today's class. You know, paper discussion. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, uh, do you want to continue? Thank you. Or uh, you want to, uh, actually time is less. So we are, you know, saying uh, we are fin finishing this. If you have any doubt in paper one, some questions were remaining, you can ask it uh, on the WhatsApp. Is it clear? So yes, sir. The paper discussion. Thank you for attending the advanced paper Thank discussion. Thank you, sir. I'm very Thank happy you. discussing things with you people. Okay. So the class will automatically terminate in like the next one minute. Okay. And I hope that you people are doing good at home.
you know today's saturday